Hello, my name is James Lehman and it is a pleasure to be here with you today. This is not a speech. This is not me preaching to you. This is us having a conversation. This is an opportunity for us to talk about life, to talk about the world honestly, for us to learn, grow, and connect with each other. I remember the first time that I realized I was treated differently because of my skin color. Before I share this story, let me contextualize my lived experience and a little about my story. Obviously, I'm a black male, but what you might not know is I was adopted into a single parent white family. My mother would later adopt two black children who became my brother and my sister. The family who lived right next door to us was a white couple with one biological child and two adopted black children. So conversations about race were commonplace in my household for as long as I can remember. Now back to this scene that I was talking about. I remember it vividly. I was in third grade at recess. My friend was going around chatting with different classmates but was intentionally avoiding me. I would go up to him and ask, what were you telling everyone? He said, I can't tell you. He would then run off. It was a weird moment. I remember feeling like something was up. Later that day in PE, I asked my friend, can you please tell me what everybody was talking about and what you were talking about? And I promise I won't get mad. He sighed and said, okay, but you told me you wouldn't get mad. I'm having a birthday party in a few weeks and I can't invite you. My dad says you can't be in our house. So I wasn't supposed to tell you about this party. Now, yes, obviously there were some other things said and other words exchanged, some of those words, but I held in the tears because I assured him that I wouldn't get mad. But truthfully, I wasn't just mad, I was destroyed. I was devastated. I went home that day and walked home thinking about this entire moment and all the feelings associated with it, and I was crushed. That night, I told my mom about it. She called our neighbors, and they came over, and they sat all of us kids down and explained racism. And that unfortunately, there are people in the world who will make us feel less than. I tell you these things not for anyone to feel sorry for me or feel bad for me, but as a way for me to explain moments in my life where I was unsure about where I fit in in this world. Moments where I didn't feel like I belonged. Moments where I felt like I wasn't truly seen. The feeling of being lost in the world, unfortunately, I believe happens to many of us. You, me, adults, your peers, students all over the world, it happens. So how does that relate to Martin Luther King? You're probably asking yourself at this point. Who, yes, we are definitely gonna talk about. How does my story and all of your stories relate to why we celebrate Martin Luther King 52 years after his passing? I'm gonna tell you. Before I do, let me ask you a question. How many of you have heard this phrase with something negative attached to the end of it? Kids these days. You know, every day I get to work with kids these days, I gotta tell you, I see you. I see the struggle some days that it takes for you just to hold it all together. The struggle to live in a world that constantly tells you that you are less than. I see you struggle to live your authentic lives when the world and the media and everybody tells you who you think you should be and who you are and all of that. Let's ignore all of that. Right now, in this moment, I see you. You see, it is foolish to presume that you feel that you can be your best selves each and every day when the soundtrack to your lives and the narrative that you constantly hear is constantly telling you that you are less than. So now we're gonna to move to MLK. And this leads me to one of MLK's speeches. And it's not a speech that people talk about a lot, but we're gonna talk about it today. You see, many don't realize that he was a champion for kids these days. He fought for the kids of that era to have a voice, to stand up, to rise up, and be the best versions of themselves each and every day. 
Six months before he was assassinated, King spoke to a group of students at Barrett Junior High School in Philadelphia on October 26, 1967. Here are some of the words, and then I'm going to give you my interpretation of what I think these words mean. Martin Luther King said this, Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodyness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel you are nobody. Always feel that you count, always feel that you have worth, and always feel that your life has the ultimate significance. King emphasized how imperative it is for kids these days to not be ashamed of themselves, to not be ashamed of living their authentic truths. Your lives have value. You are capable. You are worthy of love and belongingness. Martin Luther King went on to say this, Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have a basic principle, the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. Here's all that that means. Decide what to be and go be it. Whatever one's ambitions may be, strive to be the best at it. It doesn't matter what you want to do in life. Just go be awesome at it. One of my favorite shows growing up was Boy Meets World. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. In the final episode, Mr. Feeney said this, dream, try, do good. Yes, do good. That is with the job of all of us, to go out into the world and do good. Back to Martin Luther King. He concluded with this, and finally, and finally in your life's blueprint must be a commitment to the eternal principles of beauty, love, and justice. However young you are, you have a responsibility to seek to make your nation a better nation in which to live. You have a responsibility to seek to make life better for everybody. And so you must be involved in the struggle of freedom and justice. So let me ask you, what are you doing to make every space that you enter better? How are you making this school better? How are you making your community better? How are you making the world better? In my personal opinion, there is no generation better equipped to make this happen than all of you. I say constantly and constantly and constantly, you are the ones who are gonna make this world better. To quote the great John Legend, the future started yesterday and we're already late. It's your time to lead. As great as your school is, I know that there are many of you who are struggling. I know that there are struggles. There are those of you who are made to feel less than, made to feel insignificant, and struggle to find your place in this world. You see, it's ironic that Martin Luther King is associated with the word dream when what he really wanted was for kids these days and all of us adults actually to do the antithesis of dream, which is to wake up. He wanted us to be aware and of the world around us. He wanted us to be awake and aware to the realities that are on this planet, that there are individuals who need our love. They need us to see them. They need us to help them. They need us to acknowledge the fact that they are feeling hurt, that they are feeling pain, and that there is sadness, and that it's real, and that it's intangible. He wanted us to wake up. So I say to each and every one of you that it is time for us to no longer live the status quo of just being when it comes to life. We've got to do better. We've got to push past the status quo and leave the singing and dancing about the status quo to high school musical because your job, our job, is to wake up and see the world around us. Everyone, every person here is truly just looking to be told that you are enough. With all the perceived imperfections that all of us have, with all the perceived flaws, with whatever we have convinced ourselves that makes us feel less than, to you, the person sitting next to you, your family members, you all need to hear this. You are enough. You are so much more than enough. Every person on this planet is looking for the moment when we let them know they're enough and we see them. How are you creating this for others? You see, I think we miss so much of the now, we miss so much of what is right in front of us because we are focusing on what's next. Let us not forget about the good that we can do right here and right now. 
today, to wake up and treat people a little bit better. You all have the capability to take Dr. King's words and make them vibrant and dynamic and make them come alive. You see, it was Martin Luther King who said people fail to get along because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they have not communicated with one another. It's time to go, folks. Now is the time that we need to move closer to one another despite the fact that the world is telling us that we need to be further apart. Now is the time for us to actually take the time to speak to one another. People are tough to take close up. And now is the time to break down the barriers and uh, walls of pain, isolation, and dehumanization that we unfortunately inflict on one another. <laughs> so now what? How do we do these things? How do we make our school and community and the world better? I know you're saying, James, how do we do that? You've said all this stuff, but now what do we do? Well, I'd like to share with you my list of ways that we, we can go forth and start doing these things. You see, we are humans first each and every one of us. Something that we forget so easily. We all feel, we all have highs and lows. We all make mistakes. We all deserve grace. We all need to know that we are each other's medicine and together we are better than apart. Life can be hard. There, I said it. I don't think we say this enough to our young people that life can be hard. So here's what we need to stop doing. Ash Beckham said, there is no harder or hardest, there is just hard. You see, each and every one of us constantly compares our hard versus somebody else's hard. And then we suppress it because we feel like it, it makes us less than or weaker than if we compare what we're going through to somebody else. We all walk through the world with battle scars and hard stuff. Let us stop comparing, stop being afraid to share that sometimes things are just hard. When we can accept that each and every one of us experiences hard, we can engage with empathy for one another and support each other through this journey called life. Next, heart work is hard work. The work of becoming your best self, it's hard work, folks. <laughs> the work of bettering yourself is not like an escape room where you finally accomplish it and get a cool picture uh, to share on the Instagram. No, the journey of becoming your best self is never ending, and it's always ongoing. I can tell you that the hard work, though, it's totally worth it. Next, surround yourself with people who make you better. Find your people. Find the ones who fill you with joy and the ones who truly see you. They're going to be so important in your journey. Next, be unapologetic about who you are. Be you and live it out loud. I can tell you right now, when we stop trying to pretend or figure or who we are and who we're not, just be you. You is more than enough, so be you. Next, stop listening to the haters. It was Taylor Swift who said haters gonna hate. Hate, 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 hate. Yes, stop listening to the haters. Find the people who love you. The volume of people telling you that you matter and that you're worthy, that's what we need to listen to. Haters, turn that volume down and move past it. Only listen to the good stuff. Next, practice gratitude like it is going out of style. Tell those important people to you in your life that they are important to you and that they matter. We go, we go way too much in this world and go spend way too many days without just taking a moment to pause and tell people that we love them and appreciate them. So do it. Next, be kind to yourself. Check this out, and yes, this is a James Lehman original, but go with it. You are the only you who has ever you'd in this world. So treat yourself like a prized possession. Check it, listen to this one more time. You are the only you who has ever you'd on this planet. So think about that. Why would you ever compare yourself to anybody? There is only one you. No other person has accomplished what you have. You are a marvel. You are extraordinary. Here it is one more time, because you are the only you who has ever you'd in this world. And finally, and this is a big one, you gotta know your worth and then add tax to that, right? You gotta know that you are worthy and that you are enough, and then add that tax, because this is how we start. That is how you begin to chip away at the negativity the world has to serve up. That is how you make this world 
a better place. So to wrap this whole thing up, MLK, MLK Day, whatever you want to call it, how do we remember this man? How do we, how do we celebrate his legacy and all that he taught us? Well, he actually told us how to do that. You see, a few months before his untimely death, Dr. King spoke to this, actually. He said these words. Here's what he had to say. If any of you are around when I have to meet my day, I don't want a long funeral. And if you get somebody to deliver the eulogy, tell them not to talk too long. And every now and then, I wonder what I want them to say. Tell them not to mention that I have a Nobel Peace Prize. That isn't important. Tell them not to mention that I have three or 400 other awards. That's not important. Tell them not to mention where I went to school. I'd like somebody to mention that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to give his life serving others. I'd like somebody to say that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to love somebody. I want you to say that I tried to love and serve humanity. Yes, if you want to say I was a drum major, say I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness. And all the other shallow things will not matter. I won't have any money to leave behind. I won't have the fine and luxurious things of life to leave behind, but I want to leave a committed life behind. And that's all I want to say. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Time is the most precious gift that life affords us. My hope and wish is that we take time to see each other, to listen to each other, and to celebrate each other. If there is anybody who can make it happen, it's kids these days. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon.